Bom dia a todas e a todos. Agradecemos mais uma vez a presença de todos vocês. Dando seguimento ao nosso programa, esse é o painel de abertura da conferência com o título Falam as Autoridades. Na linha temática Políticas, Globalização e Avanço do Acesso Aberto. É, vamos iniciar o painel com mensagens de líderes do movimento do acesso aberto em reconhecimento aos 20 anos do Cielo. Em primeiro lugar, temos uma mensagem em vídeo de Jean-Claude Guedon, professor da Universidade de Montreal, teórico e ativista do acesso aberto. Good afternoon. My name is Jean-Claude Guedon. I'm in Montreal and I'm really pleased to be able to address you today. I want to really thank the organizers for this opportunity and uh, also I want to celebrate this 20th anniversary of Cielo, which to my mind is probably one of the most important organizations that is presently operating in the whole field of scholarly communication. Now, what I would like to do in the next two or three minutes, since it's, this is about the time that I will use with you, is quickly to review two or three things that will be uh, important for uh, Cielo in its future. The first thing we have to understand is that Cielo plays a very unique and central role in the creation of something entirely different from what we've seen before Cielo, and that is the possibility of imagining and thinking about a decentralized, networked uh, systems of groups of researchers that can raise their own ins raise their own uh, questions, their own problems, and yet at the same time maintain a contact with the rest of the world. It also means a platform which is able to provide evaluation tools so that the researchers of Latin America, in Africa, and in some parts of Europe may be subjected to criteria which are not the ones that are actually uh, presently uh, directed by the, the, the uh, demands of the prestige journals. So you are creating a semi-autonomous system of research which covers a lot of countries and which at the same time has the chances of moving beyond the evaluation techniques that have been used traditionally in the scholarly world. That is, for example, the evaluation so-called uh, of the quality or the excellence of the work through the impact factors of journals. Now, this brings me to a, a difficult and yet uh, central point, which at times has put me in some big discussions with Cielo, the impact factor in its role. The whole point of the impact factor is to conflate the value, financial value of uh, journals who, that are competing for market shares with the uh, intellectual value of the content of the journal and the, let's say, the myth that has been circulating for a long time is that the journal can act as a proxy for the quality of the work that they contain. Some people say that the journals have moved from the um, content as king to, con to the journal as king maker. And this has completely distorted the whole system of um, of uh, scholarly publishing, scholarly and scientific communication. Cielo, in its attempt to go beyond what has been called by some lost science or neglected science, and they were right to do so, has, has tried to explore the possibility of using the impact factor reworked, redefined, so as to be able to bring forward the value of the work done in Latin America, in Africa, in some parts of Europe. Now, I know that this has been uh, triggered by also the demands of the funders, the funding agencies of, the, um, of uh, Latin America, because in, the, in effect, they are trying to say, we are having a kind of, um, a kind of, of uh, work which we have to have uh, developed and evaluated by, by, uh, by the international criteria. Well, the whole point is that the international criteria are not very working very well 
and Cielo should really try to go move well beyond the impact factor. And the way to do it actually is quite simple because Cielo is also something very important. It's more than a portal of journals. It has the potential of becoming a platform of journals. Now, if I say that a, a Cielo is a platform and not a portal, I'm saying two things. On Cielo, you find plenty of content related to journals that are sitting within that platform. But the platform also creates new kinds of links between the different papers, the different studies, the different problems, which are covered in all the various journals of Cielo. So that in the end, the platform becomes dominant with respect to the journal, and the platform should be actually the basis for the evaluation of the content, which is on the uh, platform Cielo. So the result of that is that if journals exist beyond what we've done with journals so far, these journals are no longer tools to evaluate the work. They are tools to really offer groups of researchers the possibility to unite and work together with one voice, which is built around the congregation of articles that corresponds to that journal. And that means also that an article in particular can be actually been, be uh, taken over by more than a uh, quote unquote journal. So the result of all of this is the creation of a system based on the platform, which can relate to equivalent platforms elsewhere in the world, and that allows to create a system of evaluation, which will not be uh, made prisoner of the impact factor as it is presently organized in scholarly communication. This means also envisioning a world of science and of scholarship, which is not simply dominated by the Northern Atlantic area of the world or, uh, or uh, gradually taking over the, uh, the, um, the work of other regions of the world. It means instead series of networks that raise their own problems, their own questions, respond to their own urgent demands and yet at the same time by maintaining the methods of scholarship and of scientific method the scientific method they can very simply move into um, a network of uh, semi-autonomous question sets which allows science to develop in a poly centered manner rather than a complete uh, north uh, driven monopoly of science so what I see with Cielo is the announcement that this kind of vision has chances of surviving and even developing and perhaps even one day becoming the real objective of world science. And I'll conclude with this, this little presentation by saying, let's separate what is a global system of scholarship and science from what I would like and rather call an international system of science and let's let's make of Cielo the harbinger, the leader, the symbol of this new way of organizing world science and scholarship, of course, because I go beyond to uh, the humanities and social sciences as well. And with this, I will conclude by saying happy birthday, Cielo. A seguir, temos uma mensagem em vídeo de John Wilinski, professor da Stanford Graduate School of Education e, no âmbito da Simon Fraser University, é diretor do Public Knowledge Project, a iniciativa por trás do Open Journal System, OJS. My name is John Wilinski, and on behalf of the Public Knowledge Project, I want to wish Cielo a happy 20th anniversary. This is such a significant year for this project. A bell 20 years ago, had the foresight to understand that we would need a reliable, a consistent, a trustworthy, and a well-indexed platform in order to share research and scholarship around the world. 20 years in internet years, it's like 100 years. You've proven yourself sustainable, you've proven yourself consistent, and you've proven you have something important to give. Now, in celebrating 20 years, if I might for a moment indulge myself, 
We share something in that 20 years. The Public Knowledge Project is also 20 years old. We both started in 1998. In some strange way, we are twins separated at birth. We share a common DNA in terms of our commitment to sharing knowledge, to making it a human right to know. And in that, we've had a successful 20 years, and I'm happy to be here, at least virtually, to celebrate that, and I'm looking forward to us going forward as twins, or at least partners and collaborators, in terms of celebrating many, many more anniversaries. Thank you. Agora teremos uma mensagem de Robert Jan Smith, conselheiro sênior de acesso aberto e inovação do Centro Europeu de Estratégia Política da Comissão Europeia e enviado do acesso aberto da Comissão Europeia, que eu lerei para vocês. Microfone, ah, muito obrigado. Deixe-me começar parabenizando o Cielo pelo seu vigésimo aniversário. 20 anos de compromisso com a ciência aberta e acesso aberto. Na Europa, o acesso aberto está no topo da agenda desde que os ministros da ciência da Europa lançaram The Amsterdam Call for Action, ou a chamada para ação de Amsterdã. Especialmente na transição para o acesso aberto total e imediato às publicações científicas, recentemente foi dada uma nova dimensão com o lançamento do Plano S segundo o qual 11 agências nacional, nacionais de fomento e a Comissão Europeia decidiram unir forças e, man, e demandarão que, a partir de 2020, os que receberem auxílio financeiro para a pesquisa apenas poderão publicar em periódicos de acesso aberto e em plataformas de acesso aberto. Espera-se que também que outras agências de fomento e partes interessadas da Europa e de todo o mundo assinem o Plano S e o apoiem. Eu também espero que o Cielo o faça. Também no acesso aberto a dados científicos, muitos avanços foram feitos nos últimos anos. A Comissão Europeia lançou a iniciativa de desenvolver a European Open Science Cloud, ou a nuvem de ciência aberta europeia, onde os cientistas podem depositar, proteger e curar seus dados. Essa iniciativa baseia-se nos princípios FAIR e no trabalho da Research Data Alliance. Também o GoFair desempenha um papel fundamental neste contexto, uma vez que fornece um ecossistema aberto e inclusivo para os serviços de dados. E, mais uma vez, quando falamos em acesso aberto a dados, o Cielo é um dos principais líderes e um excelente parceiro. Portanto, mais uma vez, feliz aniversário, Cielo. Continuem com um ótimo trabalho para realizar nosso objetivo comum, alcançar o acesso aberto a publicações e dados científicos. Por fim, mas não menos importante, isso já é outra, outra fala, temos uma mensagem em vídeo do Dr. Harold Varmos, co-ganhador do Prêmio Nobel de 1989 em, fisiolo em Fisiologia ou Medicina por Estudos sobre as Bases Genéticas do Câncer e pioneiro no Movimento de Acesso Aberto. Okay. I'm sorry I can't be there in person to congratulate you and to applaud the success you've made toward open access and publishing through Cielo. The best I could do was to appear in virtual reality and to wear my Public Library of Science t-shirt and to uh, express my enthusiasm for, for what you have succeeded in doing and what you are planning to do in the future. Um, becoming part of the open access community, as was described to me some years ago by Abel Packer, is an important step forward for scientists uh, in, in developing countries and uh, Uh, in countries uh, in Latin America in particular. And uh, I also applaud the motion, movement you're making toward uh, the promotion of preprints and other aspects of open science. Uh, our job is not done. Uh, there's a great deal more that, that needs to be accomplished to uh, make open science a reality, not just open publishing. And I'm glad that we have uh, our compatriots from Central and South America Uh, working through this admirable organization to try to promote best practices for science that promotes the public good. I wish you well in this meeting, and I hope that uh, your organization continues to prosper in the years to come. Uh, thanks very much, and again, I'm sorry I, I can't be with you uh, this week to uh, enjoy the festivities. Thank you. <laughs> 